I have my amazing model Paul here, and we're doing a bit of a restyle uh, for tonight's lesson. So I'm going to be going through technically everything I'm doing. But just before I get started, I just want to give a big, uh, big shout out to my camera person. Her name is Jennifer. She's my favorite camera lady. Hi. And uh, she's going to be your voice. So if you have any questions about tonight's lesson, I'll be taking you through step by step, talking about the equipment, talking about the products, and the reasons why I'll be doing things. And uh, yeah, so, uh, so please, if you have any questions, or please tell us where you're watching from, and we'll give you a big shout out, okay? So, for tonight's lesson, I'll be working with a bit of form of disconnection, and I'm going to be doing clipper work, scissor work, you name it. So, um, so for tonight, I've already almost did almost like sort of like a square for the disconnection. So, disconnection is where two areas do not technically meet or join. So, it's going to really help elongate the top. So, on Paul's case, I literally was from the parietal ridge, I worked with the disconnected panels. So in case, if you ever wonder, so I actually, by tilting it on the head with the comb, where it starts rounding off, that's a great area. Now, if I kept it quite low with the disconnection, now the hair on the top, it might be quite heavy for pull. But if I kept it quite high, then it would actually really promote more of a rounded shape underneath. So really, when you are looking for disconnection, just the placement of the height of your sections. Now, I will be using a clipper comb for this area, so I will be starting on this side here. I've already done the other side, so let me just show you a quick preview of that. And you'll see by doing the sides first, then I can show you how we're going to match it up in the back. So now I'm going to make sure that this is a great way for getting reducing your bulk. Um, so I will be using my Andis uh, Super Z, where it's literally, it's a detachable blade motor, um, sorry, um, detachable blade system with a rotary motor. So I'm going to be going across the cone, really taking away a lot of that heaviness. Now in this case here, I want to make sure I'm going across the cone, that the bottom part of the blade is riding on almost like the spine of the cone. Through here, and when I go underneath, take that here. See, I can really just take all that hair off very quickly. And then what I'll do is I'll make sure that's all dry. Then I will then use my attachment combs, or my scissor combing, or my adjustable blade uh, clipper. So depending on what choices you would like to go with, it, the choice is yours. Now, right now, like I said, I'm really just getting rid of a lot of that bulk. Now, when I go in the back here, I will then be matching, taking this off here. So, down here. so a couple key things is, at this point here, I want to really build up a tiny bit of weight right here in the, by where the crown area is. So, I go I have all my animals walking around me. I have the cat and the dog walking around, so. <laughs> One big happy family here during the haircut lesson. So yeah, so Jen, is anyone watching tonight so far? Yes, there's about 70 people watching. Oh, perfect. So we're gonna do a nice big change here, uh, which is uh, Paul definitely needed a haircut. Uh, it's been a long time, so. Uh, so Paul is one of our regular models where we use on the training sessions. And he will be having his beard shaved on on Sunday in my class in Edinburgh, Scotland. That's where we're filming. So yeah, so I'm going through. Now I could do this whole haircut pretty much with clipper over comb. Uh, I could do it with scissor combing. I could do it with clipper guards. The choice is mine. So tonight's lesson, I'm going to show you all the different techniques so you can take more from this lesson. Ewan Morrison said, hi, Sid. Great. Hello there. Great to watch you. I'm just seeing how, just building this up. Like I said, purpose of this really taking a lot of the, the bulk off first. So, but yeah. And you'll see, like, I'll be using my clipper attachment guards. So you can see, I'll, I still want to create more of like a square shape. 
still building this up here and also once again working on the sides here. I don't want it to be too heavy on the actual side there. So you see all this is going to be coming off. I'll be doing a nice little taper in the back here. Still having a bit of length. Um, so it's not necessarily going to be a skin fade, but just enough hair just really just to help take the shape. So now I'm just going to do a light mist of the cap and faucet uh, scalp tonic. So this is like almost like a bit of like a blow drying lotion. Let me just show the audience here. Here we go. And this is actually a British made product range and I've been using it for about 10 years now, which I absolutely love. So um, here we go. So I'm just going to just quickly dry the sides and the back. And also this, so I don't keep on like, slipping on this mess of hair here. So now I'm just going to be blow drying it down. The reason why is because when we use the clippers, when we use scissor or combing, we tend to go in upwards or against the grain. So that's why I need to blow dry this down. Now with the clipper work, you have multiple different ways about you going about it. You can go upgrading, which is literally going from a shorter point to a longer. Or you could do downgrading, which is going from a longer guard number going down to a shorter guard number. So like a 4, 3, 2, 1. Upgrading is the opposite, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then you'll see I'm going to be working through here, the hairline area, and also really fading that in the end. So I need to make sure it's all dry here before I, I, I actually start cutting. The reason why is the, the blow dryer, when you blow dry hair, it will help, it will expand the hair. When the hair is wet, it sticks together. So that's why I really want to make sure that it's all dried and all ready for the next step. So are there any questions yet, Jen? Anything I need to know of? No questions. No, still people, a lot of people watching, but there's no questions. Okay, no problem. Man. And I know last week's lesson, I do apologize. I was, I was down in Leicester, England, and the reception of the Wi-Fi was so horrible in the barbershop where I was at. And I do apologize for that. So we couldn't continue. We actually had to stop the feed. I do apologize about that. So what I'm actually going to be doing is I'm actually going to be using, uh, because this pulls hair is so thick, that's why the rotary motor inside the, uh, the Super Z is that what I'll be using is a three and a half detachable blade. Now that would be technically 9.5 millimeter. Now, the reason why I'm using this clipper first to get rid of a lot of that bulk is because his hair is that thick. So I really just want to make sure I'm just using that going through. Now you see a bit of weight there. That's okay. I will be blending that through. So I'm going up and out. Almost like a C motion. Um, I'm not sure if I'm saying the name right. My mess. It's asking if you have an online academy. Ooh. <laughs> okay, well, just to let you know for the future, I was actually, uh, we actually got big things that are happening in, um, for 2024, uh, so I'll be, uh, we're filming the videos as we speak, so we have a lot of uh, filming and also it would be great for any, uh, where it has from the foundation aspect to the intermediate or, you know, then it goes up to the advanced, we'll be doing wet shaving, beard design, talking about everything about the barbering world and all these little things that can help you, you know, become, you know, a barber or increase your, your success in your career. So, yeah, so fingers crossed that will be launched in 2024, early 2024. Okay, so I'm literally, as you can see, just taking away that bulk. From through. Like I said, that's a three, oh, sorry, that's a nine. 0.5 millimeter, so that would be a three and a half blade. Now, what that means is three and a, three and a half. That big number here. That means when you use this blade, it will be about three and a half weeks growth. 
Yeah. So when I use a number one attachment guard, that means you're cutting the hair down to one week of growth. All right. So that's what those big numbers mean. And then of course you have the different sizes. Now, as we're going through, here we go. So like I said, just getting rid of that bulk. You know, but I honestly, I love, I'm American, you know, I'm old school. I love my detachable blade clippers. You'll see I'm gonna be using my masters. I mean, I love my Andis equipment, especially a lot of the, like, kind of like the old school type of equipment here. I'm just, it's just the way I am, so. Now, I got rid of a lot of the bulk. Now, what I'll be doing next so I will be now just going to be doing the outlining here of the perimeter first. Then you'll see, then I'm going to be working on the rest of the clipper work. The reason why is for me, it's just a great way to uh, um, just to establish my guidelines. Now you'll see, sorry, I, I'm trying to stay at my back out of the motion here. So I'm using, what I'm using is, I'm using the Anderson Line Pro. And then because the reason why it's got a T-blade design, the... oh sorry, and it's got a T-blade design and I'm just going to use a couple of the teeth to be able to do this. Now on this side, I'll be going backhand, okay? Then once I do backhand, then I'm going to go forehand, okay? So by going back first, then in order to create that almost a C cup or C motion, the reason why is I don't want it to look like Lego man. So, meaning I don't want to put like square lines at all. So around the shape in the temple bone area works out best. It's a bit more flattering and um, especially sometimes it tends to look a bit more natural, especially when you're doing working with your clippers. Yeah. And you can even do a tiny bit over here by the hairline, um, around the ear. Just get, because sometimes when you have a man that has a, a, like a strong growth pattern, what you can do is uh, you can just do the whole perimeter first, and then you can then do the tapering or the fading out. I'm now going to switch to the Andis Masters here, which has an adjustable blade, which is the lever here, adjustable lever. And so what I'm first going to do is I'm still going to be going through that downgrading motion. So what I can do is, uh, sorry, do I have my glasses on? Yeah, I do. Um, so. <laughs> it's worrying if you don't know if I you know, have them right? on. <laughs> it happens if you wear glasses, sometimes I put them on my head and I forget they're there. So I'm gonna spend an hour in the house looking for them. I'm now gonna be going to a number two attachment comb and it's gonna be on a closed setting. Now, just for any of the ones hairdressers or anyone learning about barbering, now, if I put the blade down, okay, that means it's an open blade. That means it's going to be a lot longer. So maybe more, a little, goes from about an extra three millimeter. So it'll be almost like a three. When I put the lever down, it's a closed blade system. And that's a number two, which is six millimeter. All right. So then, of course, you go in between. So. And that's just for the masters though, isn't it? Because the masters increase quite a lot. Yeah, well, the masters definitely you have a lot more room for maneuver. Mm. So, because I know masters are your favorite, Jen. Yes. So, that's the beautiful thing about having marrying someone that's a barber, because now I know what to get her for Christmas each year. Yes, so, masters. <laughs> so, it's a beautiful collection. So, as I'm continuing here, you'll see I will be doing a seam motion. Now, a lot of times, a little trick if you want to prevent it from going too high, what I'll do is, and this is also works for tapers, I actually put my finger here. So by putting your finger here, it actually just prevents me from taking it too high or too in. Because when I go in, that's when it's going to go a lot shorter. So I'll go up and out. Cool. Any questions, Jen? Anything I need to know? No, no questions. Okay. Still people watching though. Oh, perfect. Always like to hear that. <laughs> so what I'm now going to do is I'm now going to go to a one, and now I'm going to do it open, then you see me do a close. And now I'm going to be just sh shuffling down. You'll see I will still clean that up at the end. And this area, I will be 
Um, going to be tapering that out here as well, and then work on the blending with the scissor comb technique as well. So an open one, and like I'm just jiggling it, okay? So making sure you keep your thumb up here, that which is the heaviest part of the clipper, which is the motor, and the thumb is like the steering wheel, okay? So the thumb is like the steering wheel of the clipper. So you see, I'm gonna gradually take that shorter and shorter, working that through. Uh, now, of course, when the gentleman has a beard, you do want to take certain allowances. That's why you would need to discuss with your guests, discuss with your client, okay? Does he want it blended into his beard or does he want it very uh, disconnected? So that will be done during the consultation. Now, during the consultation as well, you would need to ask him certain questions. Like, does he use product in his hair? You know? And he's like, oh no, I never know what type of product to use. That's when it's perfect time to be able to talk to your client like a professional and discuss product options. You know, how does he cleanse his hair? All right? How does he treat his hair? How does he finish it? You know, there's multiple different ways. So definitely really speak to your guests, speak to your clients about how they look after themselves. Look after their hair and not themselves. I mean, you never know. Paul could be a crackhead. You never know. So. Um, Okay, so now I'm going to continue. I will now be doing a little bit of uh, blending with the scissor combing. Jenna, did you ever sweep up the uh -huh. Cool. So now a couple couple tricks is now you see I'm going to be using a white colored comb. The reason why is so you can actually really see exactly what's happening here. Now as opposed to a dark colored comb. Now another thing about scissor combing is especially working that area. I'm going to tell you guys my little trick, all right? Now, my little trick is, now, if you see that white line on the scalp, so I left it a little bit, little bit, dull, little bit longer here. Now, the reason why is if you see that white line on the scalp, you see how it jumps down? That means the hair is longer there because longer hair is going to weigh more than shorter hair. So that's why it has like a little baseline. What you're trying to achieve for your haircut is that line, the white line on the scalp, to be perfectly straight across. So that's my little trick. So always check visually how that shape is, especially on the scalp. You'll see that white line. So hopefully that was a little um, useful little tidbit. Now, I will be using my larger scissors. Now, these ones are a brand called Green Mouse from Japan, and the UK supplier is Yoi Scissors. So I tend to use these a lot for when I'm doing my scissor combing. Because they are larger, um, it really helps me um, get through. Go to carve. Carve that one. Going through. And you'll see, like, I can even chip it and really carve with the tip of my scissors there. You can use a razor, you can use your foil shaver. There's different things you can use. So, Okay, so I'm gonna continue here, making sure I'm just gonna go back into that. Then I'll be working on the back. So before I do that, just to help with the finishing of the blend, I will then be using my thinning scissors, or I like to call them blending scissors. Now with these ones, they're a brand called Oka Secura, and they actually have a, 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 a little dial here. So if you want 30% hair off, 20% or 10%. So because in this case, I gotta switch up to 30 because, you know, Paul is that, just that type of guy, you know? So he's got a lot of hair, so I wanna really go in and just work on the blend here, work with the color. So still be using the same cutting technique. I'm going against the grain, working with the wide tooth end of the comb. The reason why the wide tooth end is because, once again, it won't take it as short. All right, it doesn't take as much hair or big jumps of it or big clumps of it. So, cool. Any questions I need to know, Jen? Or? No. No? Okay, then. Is everyone still watching? Mm -hmm. Oh, thank God. Still have a job. <laughs> yep. So, yeah, so I am, um, I am uh, an educator. Uh, I do uh, classes on uh, hair brain each, I think, a couple times a month for the free live video tutorials because it's all about giving back 
to the industry, giving back to the students, giving back to the barbers and hairdressers from around the world. So, where is everyone watching from? Why don't you guys let us know in the comment section? So, I'm going to go back in. I'm going to do a little bit more clipper over combing here. Then you'll see the way I'm going to be doing the top. And then do that, you'll see, I'm going to have a lot of fun here. So the key thing is, make sure when we are doing clipper of a comb, okay, really make sure that comb is coming out. There we go, I'm scanning this up. Um, Michael Embleton, he's, he's asking if you can repeat what you said at the beginning about a line on the scalp that shows the hair is longer. Oh, that my little trick. Oh, yes. And he says hi from the northeast of England. Oh, cool. All right. So what a little trick is that uh, this was taught to me when I was working at, uh, at Satsu, uh, excuse me, Sassoon. What happens is, okay, so you'll see, so, um, what will happen is, you see that white line on the scalp, okay? Now what happens is, when you first start cutting um, the hair, what happens is, you'll see that the white line on the scalp is like a bit like a baseline. That means is that you have the short hair which will stick out, the long hair which is heavier will fall down. That's why it looks like a baseline. That is just a visual aid for when you're checking your haircut about looking at the way how the hair is falling. So that's a great little trick. You could do that on your graduated bobs for the women or the short pixie looks. You know, you could definitely go, you know, check it different, different ways. There we go. Yeah, so this is just a wee bit right there. Cool. And then what then I'll be doing is I will then uh, have to just do a little bit of the taper here and then I'm going to be going towards the top. You have Colin watching. Colin from Your Scissors. Mm -hmm. Oh, hello, Colin. He's saying hi, Susan Jen, and he wrote like the details of the green mouse scissors that you're using and the discount. Oh, perfect. Mm. Well, thank you. And then you have Gino Souza saying, um, watching from Danville, California. Oh, California. I still got to take Jen there. She's yeah. been to New York, but I want to take her to California. Because uh, I used to live and work in uh, Santa Monica. Um, so yeah, so really <laughs> looking forward to it. Now, what I'm going to be doing is first, um, I will be doing establishing a little bit of a, you know, a bit more of a taper down at the bottom here for, for pull. So I'm just using my one guard. I'm just doing a little bit more of like a flick. Now at this point here, um, I got to be quite careful because he has a strong indentation here. So what I need to do is I'm kind of like dancing. I'm just like swaying from side to side. Okay, now when I want to go in and attack that area, then what I'll do is I will then create a flatter um, surface by tilting his head the opposite way. Now his, head, his growth pattern goes down. So, oh sorry, I apologize. His growth pattern goes up. So I'm gonna go down with the clippers. So really take a closer look at the way everything is falling. So <clears throat> Michael Emberton asks if you always take the top horseshoe out as you use the clippers. Uh, no. So in this case here, because I'm working with disconnection, that's the reason why um, I decided to use a horseshoe section. Now, if this was going to be like just an uh, all connected haircut. Um, no, no horseshoe section at all. See, a lot of, some barbers or hairdressers tend to always put a, a horseshoe section in there. Me personally, I think that's a bit of like a waste of time if you're not working with disconnection because it will slow you down, especially if you're a beginner, you know, because you have to worry about the sectioning and so forth. So personally, I only do a horseshoe section uh, in that case if I am, um, if I'm working with disconnection. So, hopefully that answered your question there, Michael.
Okay, so what I'm doing now, I will then be using, uh, now I tend to like, I like using the half, <coughs> excuse me, the half guard. The reason why is because it's a bit smoother on the neck, and then you'll see it, then I can play around with using uh, my open blade system. Michael, asked, Michael Embleton asks if you're a gent stylist or also ladies. Yeah, so I do, um, well, I'm actually an educator, so I don't um, do clients anymore. So uh, I originally started, this was like 34 years ago. Yeah, I'm old. <laughs> um, I started off at 14 in the barber shop, and then eventually I got into doing ladies' hair. But then, to be honest with you, now in my life, um, I have to say, honestly, my, my passion is doing is pure barbering. Um, so I teach wet shaving, I teach... Um, I teach beer designing. We're doing a wet shaving course on Sunday and Monday up in Edinburgh. Um, and that's fully booked as well, which is great. I'll uh, be teaching, um, you know, other courses in Leicester, um, England. So, yeah. So, we got a lot of good things happening. Um, you know, with the type of courses we teach and everything. But, to be honest with you, um, even though I can cut women's hair, and I'm not too bad at it, I don't think. Um, but to <laughs> me, the understanding is that cutting hair is cutting hair. Once you know the strong technique, uh, like I'm going to show you on top, um, you'll see. It's uh, you have a lot of fun. So hopefully, Michael, that hopefully that uh, hopefully answered your question there for you, buddy. Michael also asked, "What sassoon you did you work?" Uh, I'm sorry. Michael also asked, "Which sassoon did you work at?" I worked at the. Uh, it's no longer there. It's the uh, Advanced uh, Advanced Academy in London. Uh, so I used to teach there, and also I used to teach uh, at Davies Muse, and also at the at the LA Academy, but that's no longer there. Or Davies Muse. Uh, so they opened up. Uh, I, I forgot what street it is. Uh, they opened up a brand new spanking new academy. So which is I'm so happy for um, some of my friends at Sassoon, so. Oh, Michael also says, no wonder you're an educator, you're brilliant. Where can I find out about your courses? Oh, cool. So what you can do, um, so Michael, uh, what you can do is you can actually contact us on Instagram, uh, which is Sid Salton Academy, and I'll be answering it, um, unless Jen answers it before me, and I'll be able to answer any questions you have uh, about type of courses and about what you're after. We will be launching, hopefully, an online training uh, program platform in um, uh, next year. So hopefully, fingers crossed, everything goes well. So Now, just to show you, I'm actually using the brand new spanking trimmers from Andis. Now, what's amazing about this is I don't have it plugged in, but it's wireless charging. So And also, they got an exposed T-blade design, so you can really see... Um, especially working with your outline, your perimeters. And uh, I love them because I love clippers with a bit of like, it has this, a nice natural weight to it. And I absolutely just love it, you know. Um, okay, I gotta move on because I have to, at the top, I have to blow dry that and then I have to show you how to style this as well. So I got a lot of stuff to do. So I do apologize for the weight, everyone. Cool. Okay, how are you holding up for your kit? You still there? Yeah, okay, cool. Okay, so you can see this is still quite long here. I will go back and just work with his color because his natural salt and pepper color will actually will affect uh, the blending in a way. So, but on the top here, what I'll be doing is I'm going to be using a profile section down the middle, and that's going to be my guide. Now, just to show you how long whew, that is. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing is going down the central area. Like I said, his beard will be done on Sunday. Okay, so uh, so I do apologize if he's looking a little bit scruffy, but we're using him for our class on Sundays. So um, so please, it's uh, that's the reason why. Normally, I would also show you how to do the beard. Now, I will be dropping this out here. Okay. Now, I will be working triangle shape, which is shorter to longer. Okay. 
Now I switched to my Green Mouse Slim Blade Damascus Steel. Now these ones are, I use for more of my uh, precision work. So going through here. Now I decided to take sections instead of now going this way. I'm taking sections going this way, vertical across the head. The reason why is if I go that way versus this way, this way will reduce more weight because these are technically vertical. Vertical, sorry. This will actually is a great way to build up weight or over direct back. Now, what happens is every time you work with over direction, you not only just keep you know help keep length, but also a little bit of weight as well. Michael says, fabulous, I've been to the London school, the London Sassoon, uh, Jay was the educator about, oh, Jay. Oh, about 15 God. years ago. I was his, uh, <laughs> I was his creative, one of his creative directors there. Oh, God bless Jay. I have nothing but love for Jay. Oh, my God. He's funny. Oh. Have I seen him before? Mm, no, no. He's a really nice guy. Yeah, he goes to America a lot for teaching. Gino Souza says I attended Davies Muse at the and the Advanced School on Queen Street and oh, wow. Queen 1977. Street. Oh wow. I think that was a little bit before my time, Gino, but you know, I have mad respect for you. Queen Street, oh my god, I used to love when I first visited there because it was so British because they had the spiral staircase and also they had you know the windows where they keep, um, you know they have the, uh, the circle, uh, the bubble things on them uh, from back in the day when they were first done? Oh, I used to love that. Colin Simpson asks what comb is the white one? Ooh! Colin, you think I'm Cheeky. cheating on you? <laughs> I'm actually using the white sessi bone. Now, back in the day at Sassoon, we used to use the, like, kind of like, it was like, kind of like a military green color. Now, this one I tend to use a lot in barbering is because I also use this for scissor combing because it's a lot more softer on the scalp. I use the white because so I can see against dark hair, but also it's kind of like got a bit better grip here. So like, it's almost like, I call it like grip tape almost. It's like, if you see the pattern and it's really good for doing barbering, especially, I think, as well, because of the grip, when you're doing scissor or combing, it kind of like helps stay with the scissors. I don't know how it works, but it like I always find that when I do scissor or combing, it the grip here just has a better uh, friction with the scissors. And like it just helps keep the scissors there. I don't know. And I have a question for you that I know the answer, but people will find it interesting. Why do you use a white comb and not a black comb? Oh. Uh, the reason why is especially on dark hair, I can really see exactly what I'm doing. So for me personally, um, it's a big, a big, um, it really helps me, you know, because like I think, I'm not gonna lie, as I'm getting older, what I realize is like, if I don't have my glasses on, I can't see anything. I mean, like I'm just getting worse and worse. And uh, so I think, I don't know if it's a vanity thing, I, I kind of don't wear my glasses sometimes. But when I'm cutting hair, I really need to see. I want to make things easier for myself. So that's the reason why, Jen. This makes my life so much easier. Now, just to show you from a straightforward view, okay, by taking sections this way, my body position, it will be on here because I'm right-handed. And so when I over-direct, I'm just over-directing to the previous section. Well, I should be. I don't have a mirror in front of me. Yet. <laughs> yes, you are. Oh, thank you, Jen. <laughs> I'll be your mirror. You'll be my mirror? Mm -hmm. oh. We should write a song about that. <laughs> you are my mirror. Instead of like that hero song. My hairdressing mirror. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm going to continue. But yeah, guys, so if you have any questions whatsoever here, I'm, I'm trying my best to do it quick for you. Um, he does have a little bit <laughs> And then you'll see the way uh, after it's dry, I'm going to be doing my texturizing. But it, I'm going to do it in a way where I work with different types of scissors, uh, also uh, modern cutting techniques with a bit of old school as well. So Okay, so now I've done that bit. Now I want to make sure in the back here, 
Now the way I'm going to be doing it, so I'll be going down the middle, I'm going to go up first. The reason why is because I want to establish a corner or a square shape in the back. So then when you'll see, I want to make sure it will also help with the blending. So going this way first. Put my body back here. Now, if you are lefty, you will be standing on the opposite side. Again. Kenny Allen Burke says, so good to see you again. Oh, thank you, my friend. Yeah, so hopefully we'll see a lot here on uh, hairbrains. Um, we are trying our best, like I said, I really want to make sure that uh, everything, um, you know, everything, if anyone knows me, everything, I always try my best, um, especially to be able to give knowledge to students, uh, you know, here on Hairbrain, which I, I've, I've been a member of Hairbrain since when they used to just have, uh, to me, it used to be like Facebook for hairdressers before, you know, um, you know, they didn't, I don't think they even had videos on there at the time. And I remember I had started a group on there uh, called The Art of Barbering, and I used to get the piss taken out of me from the hairdressers. Uh, sorry, man. Um, like, you know, it was before barbering became popular, and I started the own group because I was like, no, you know, barbering is where it's at. And uh, yeah, so uh, <laughs> I remember that, you know, it was, it was like just like Facebook or like MySpace. Um, and it's so great to see the way. Um, Gerard and Amy and everyone in the office, you know, Randy, on how much they've grown this brand. And I'm so glad that they asked me that if I, you know, could do these live video tutorials. So I'm just grateful that they haven't kicked me off yet. They haven't said, you know, I always check in with them. They're like, yeah, if you still want to do them. I was like, yeah, I can help people out. Okay, so once again, so this could be like, Depending on how you want to dress it or style it, you know, this is great for working on curly hair, working on wavy hair, you know, sh like shorter length on top. You can play around with that. Have fun with it. You know, with, like that's the thing, it's about barbering. There's no right or wrong way. It's about what's going to work well for you. So if you prefer scissor over combing, go for it. If you prefer a clipper over comb or a clipper with guards, it's up to you. There's no right or wrong way, you know? All that all matters is the end result. Now, sorry, I'm just, what happened was, I'm gonna be so honest with you, I had um, oiled my clippers uh, before, you know, today, and uh, there must have been oil on the, because um, they were in, in, the, in the stands, uh, it must have been oil on, on the handle, and uh, it must have touched my face, so I have oily face with hair sticking to it. So, it's nice. <laughs> like driving me on the wall. Okay, so what I used was the Kaplan Fawcett uh, Hair and Scalp uh, Tonic. Now this one comes in spray, uh, spray form. Now, it's got like a light hold, so I don't want to like, uh, you know, I want to give a nice natural body to it. So first, um, you see, I need to make sure. Wow, so much air pull. Your wife wouldn't know what, what hit her when you stepped in, huh? <laughs> It's going to be date night tonight, huh? Woo All right, so. Now, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm just really just blow drying a lot of the water out. I'm just using a vent brush at the moment. Um, and I like my little small vent brush. It just fits in my bag. But normally, you'll see, you see, I'll probably later on going to be using my vest brush. So this one's a second row. Um, Oh no, I probably, that's, I think it's, yeah, seven row. But yeah, so key thing is when I'm blow drying this, okay, I want to make sure it's 100% dry. I mean, so many, sometimes I see so many barbers that don't blow dry the hair properly, or they don't blow dry it 100%. Now, usually, you know, times when I don't dry it 100%, uh, for example, if the hair is curly or long, I might use a diffuser. Um, so in certain circumstances, Gino says, excellent work. I appreciate you sharing. 
Oh, thank you so much, Gina. And I love your name, because you must be Italian. So. I think my blow dryer is like dying, I think. <laughs> it's been around for a while. It's been around, yeah. It's like one of your original ones, you guys. <laughs> So if you know any recommendations of any blow dryers, please let me know. I remember I used to love my old Wigo when I worked at Sassoon, the uh, metal silver one. It was great. It had like no power. Uh, great for diffusing. It looked so cool, so tiny, but it weighed a ton. Uh, that's why they had to stop making them. Because um, it was just like so heavy. And it wasn't like, wasn't healthy uh, for people to use them, I guess, for the uh, wrist. But I used to love the Wiggos. Let us know if you ever had one of those old silver Wiggos. Probably just shows my age. <laughs> okay, so I'm just moving on. I'm, what I'm doing as well, I'm just picking up the hair. I'm leafing it, lifting it. Just to give it a little bit more extra body. Now the reason why I'm wrap drying this at this moment is because I really just want to kind of like control the ends so I can get like a better finish. Even though I will use pomade afterwards, um, I still want to be able to control and, you know, less work for myself in the end. Now, you can actually have a lot of fun with this. So you can do, um, if the hair was a wee bit shorter, what would happen is you could do this like almost like a, a big pompadour. Uh, right now, it's almost like a slick back, which is great. Uh, so just something to make it easier for him to, to work with. Uh, you know, he hasn't had a haircut for like, I think, three or four, like about four months or so. Uh, so when, he, when Paul first came to us, he actually had hair down to here. It was crazy. And uh, he came down, God bless his student. <laughs> oh my God, that student. I thought she was going to have a breakdown because uh, he was a model for our class. And uh, he had a big change, so. It's that India, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. Cool, so, people still watching or? Oh, good. So I got, I got 10 minutes left, so I gotta, I'm gonna have to start cutting soon. <laughs> and you'll see, um, I'm using, I'm the head educator for uh, Captain Fawcett products, for hair care products, and uh, they're British, British made, uh, which is excellent. They've been around for like, I think it's like 11 years now, and I actually have my own signature range with them. It's called Barbarism, and you'll see, uh, I'll use it in a second, because I'm gonna put a little beard balm in his beard. So I can show you what it looks like. So. But yeah, so we still will decide on Sunday if he'll have a beard or whatever he's having done. So. I think a, always, a big mustache would look good. Oh, oh yes. Long live the mustache. So I'm growing mine out. So this is my growing stage. Because so I can probably use my own mustache for <laughs> um, But I had a pre-worn uh, Jen, who's my partner. I had a Seder. I'm like, listen, I'm just going to grow my mustache. Are you okay with that? She's like, yeah, fine. Yeah. Hopefully she'll, hopefully she'll agree. Hopefully it'll look good. Hey, it happens good. when you don't have hair here. You tend to, men tend to grow facial hair. Otherwise, I think I look like an egg. Okay, so. Once again, so you could do like a little Leo DiCaprio look. <laughs> He's going to hate me. Um, <laughs> you know, with this type of uh, haircut, it's like, depending on the way you style it. You know, if you want volume, so you can take a brush and maybe like a stronger hold product and really create lots of volume to the hair. Um, now, you can do that, or you can do a very strong side parting. Okay, almost like uh, a little more of like, uh, <laughs> remember back in the day, Tony Hawk, 
when he was a teenager, he had this like really floppy hair. So you could do something like that. You can do, it, you can just have a lot of fun, make it look all groom. If the choice is yours, central parting for like a Leo DiCaprio look curtains, the choice is yours. You know, and, and what I would actually do is I would actually speak, speak to your clients about that. You know, speak to them, ask them like, you know, what they like, you know, do they play around with products? show you a couple different ways especially with texturizing hair kind of like I kind of want it to kind of like so it's just I think it's the lighting it's just like here we go. I just want to make sure that's all blended there okay so there's a couple different ways you could go and texturize the hair so for example you can actually work with slicing now slicing will be going especially with the direction here and you're going, um, yeah, you can see how much hair comes out. So going open and close. You could do that. So for example, so depending, like sometimes if the guy has a French crop of the hairs going forward, you would go down forward. Now in this case, just to be able to help brush it back, um, then I'm going to just turn him around a little bit here so you can see open and close. Now, what I'll be doing is, so then you also have, you could also do, you could also do point cutting. Okay, what I'm doing is I'm really going in Now, when you do the left side, if you're right-handed, you'll see I might do a back hand motion. Open and close. You can also... There we go. Open and close. Turn around. Now, because of the timing, and also because here, this hair is so thick, I'm actually going to be using my texturizing scissors. Now those ones I'll be using are Oka Secure scissors and I'll show you what they look like in a second. Now when you first use them, like when you first see them, they're like, oh my god, what's going to happen with these? But they are actually, um, they are actually like, they're actually just beautiful, especially when you have hair this thick. So. Okay, so if you can see these ones here, so these ones have the bigger holes, and I tend to use these for very thick hair. Um, you'll see when I go in, you could do it for scissor combing. And this is a great way to really help, one with blending or weight removing, you could pick it up here. It also almost like your slicing effect. There we go. Paul, why I have to pick Paul as a model? His hair is so thick. <laughs> oh, no, I'm glad I did. I love Paul. The, uh... And of course, we came. I can't wait to get my fingers all around his face on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so you can see, so it's almost like opening and closing. Here we go. You know, you can also pick the hair up with the comb. Unless if you're using blending scissors. Any questions? Any last minute questions? Then? No, no questions. Yeah. Someone saying hi from. Um, wait, I've lost it now. Me. B. 
Belize. Ali saying hi from Belize. Oh, hello. Well, I hope you're enjoying everything. Hopefully that uh, some of you can take back with some of the, uh, the things that I've been talking about. And, uh, yeah. But you can see, um, you can see on Sid Saltung Academy on Instagram. Um, like I said, we will be um, launching our online uh, course uh, curriculum um, in uh, next year. So in early, it'll be ready early next year. So I'm dead excited about it. So we also do, uh, I primarily do, uh, even though I live in Edinburgh, Scotland, I do in salon training. So I go to barbershops, academies, and so I come to you. So if you don't want to pay for all the staff to like go to London or America, or whatever, for training, I can come to you. So um, once again, this, <clears throat> it's like, I, I absolutely love what I do. And it's just such great that I could be able to share with you you know, my experience, my strength here, and just want to be able to help you guys and see if there's anything, you know, any any questions you have or anything. I just want to make everyone a big success. So, it's all about helping others. Okay, so now this area right here, I'm going to reduce, you see there will be that little corner here, because I want to be able to, yep, there we go. I just want to help stay back. So when you're doing shapes like this here, there's this little corner here where it's just a, right where almost like the frontal bone, just below the temple, uh, uh, temple bone. There we go. Margaret says hi from Ireland. From Ireland. All mm -hmm. right. Hello. Yeah, we've been to, well, We've been to Northern Ireland. Uh, we went to Belfast. That was lovely. We had a great time there. It was quite quite quick on the plane ride uh, from Edinburgh. Um, there we go. Okay, so what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to have to stop because I need to finish. Otherwise, hair brain, you know, they charge me a million pounds per minute I run overboard. Okay. So now I'm going to blow all the hair off it. Like I said, this will be all, um, you know, he'll get the full grooming on uh, Sunday where we'll be trimming his eyebrows and doing a, uh, let's see, we're going to do this amazing look for his uh, facial hair. So, I'm, he doesn't know yet, so, but what we're going to do, guys, so please, let us know in the comment section what type of facial hair should we do on Paul on Sunday. He's an open book. So we got mustache, we got mutton chops. Woohoo! Alright, so. I had that already. Yeah, we got the soul patch, right? Uh, let's see, goatee. Alright? No, not goatee. Soul patch with that little friend, you know, you it, otherwise known as the French kick laugh. <laughs> Come on, let's have some fun. Let's see if we can get him divorced. <laughs> right. Okay, so um, in this case here, I'm going to keep it very, a bit more of like a natural feeling. So what I'm going to be doing is, I'm going to be using the Captain Fawcett Hair Putty. Okay, now this is great. It's got a really cool lid. You can see they got the branding inside. Um, keeping a stiffer upper, <laughs> upper quick. <laughs> Normally it says lift. But so what I'm going to be doing is, so I'm going to be using a little bit here. Work it through my hands. Now, depending on what you want to do, if, you, if you're worried about getting a big gunk of it, you can just very gently press down first. Like I said, I'm kind of going for like a little Brad Pitt type of uh, furry uh, from the movie, Fury, sorry. Um, furry. Fury. <laughs> I can, sorry, I can't talk tonight. <laughs> Would have made sense for you though. <laughs> <laughs> so this really kind of like I really want to get the illusion. So it's got like it's got like a natural shine, and it, and the thing is the weight of the product. Now a lot of times, like when when you're first starting off barbering uh, or hairdressing, sometimes you don't know what product to put in. Um, now in this case here, because 
Okay, if I just use a spray product to control this or finish it, you see it's very lightweight. Now, remember, with the cream, okay, it's got a little weight to it. And that's why, I, because Paul's hair is quite thick, I really just want to kind of like create like a little weight, a little control. You know, not too heavy. You know, I don't want like, you know, Aquanet or anything. I don't want a strong hold like that. Yeah, just want a very natural, something that he can recreate at home. So he can rough it up, you know, when he gets stressed at work, when he gets stressed looking at the baby or anything, or when he goes disco dancing. The thing is, it's like his haircut. <laughs> Always. <laughs> he does that all the time. <laughs> you know, and that's the thing, it's just like have a bit of fun with it. You know, let it flop around. He's got that disconnection. It's all about just having fun. Let me, uh, you can always use a wide tooth comb. Just let it, just let it glow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I can't talk tonight. That's let awesome. it glow. Let it glow. <laughs> balls, balls never coming back to me. <laughs> <laughs> Jen, you have a new client. He doesn't have to see anymore. <laughs> okay, guys. So, now just a bit of a recap. Um, so what I did first was I actually sectioned off like a, a square horseshoe on the top and I worked with my clipper over comb technique. I did use my a bit more powerful clippers. I used the Andis Super Z um, and by using those I worked with clipper over comb with a wide tooth comb, a, a clipper comb, and I took the, the bulk off first. Then I did a downgrading system which is a larger number going downward, so three and a half then going down to about a one and a half guard. Then in the back, same thing. Um, also making sure I use the trimmers around the whole hairline area. Then I dried it. Then I worked with blending techniques such as scissor combing and also my blending scissors or thin scissors. On the top, I worked more or less a triangle shape here. Going this way. Work triangle here with sections going across the head, like that, vertical. And then in the back, I kept it as square as possible, all right, just to really help compensate the flatness of his head. Then I blow dry it. Uh, once again, I used the Captain Fawcett Hair and Scalp Tonic, where it's just really with a light hold. Then I used, at the very end, doing a lot of texturizing, using my Open Secure uh, texturizers, right, which is the big ones here and really taking a lot of weight off because his hair is so thick. And then I use the Captain Fawcett hair putty. So any last minute questions, Jen? No, no, no. questions. All right, guys, so thank you very much. Uh, oh, one last thing. I can always use the Captain Fawcett's barbarism range for the beard balm. And when using that, because I want him to smell really good to the missus. So I'm gonna be taking a bit in my hands, work it through and gliding it through, okay? He will be getting um, his facial hair done on Sunday, so hopefully if we do something really cool, I will post pictures up so you guys can see. So, but thank you very much to Hairbrained and 